Welcome to The Bottom Line. I'm Pastor Rick Utsi from Maranatha Community Fellowship in Plain City, Ohio. You know, this past week I was reading a devotional and it referenced a, a video on YouTube. And the video was called, How Wolves Change Rivers. And it's actually a fairly good video. I was watching it and it talked about how um, Yellowstone a National Park here in the United States was was actually deteriorating because we have so many elk in the valleys there that are just eating all the vegetation. The, the land's becoming barren. Um, there's erosion. The banks are crumbling. The rivers are me meandering. And, and so there's all kinds of life that's just disappearing uh, from Yellowstone because of this problem. And if you don't have vegetation, obviously a lot of the smaller critters and everything just disappear. And so how do you think they, they proposed a solution to that? Well, according to this video, they introduced a small pack of wolves back into Yellowstone because Yellowstone used to have wolves and, and they were gone for 70 years. And back in the mid-90s, they introduced, I think, like 41 wolves back into the park. And what these wolves did, they were hoping they would actually thin out the elk population, and it did to some extent. It thinned them out some, and it also changed their behavior. It, it caused them to move up higher into the mountains, into the higher elevations, and out of the valleys where they could easily be caught. So, so it did change that, and all of a sudden, vegetation started coming back. The aspen trees started growing exponentially, I mean, just a lot faster than they were. And so with all this renewed vegetation and renewed growth, it brought back the birds, it, it brought back beavers who created even more pools of water as they dammed up the, some of the smaller tributaries in the park. And bears came back as there were more berries and other things to eat. And all, so all of a sudden you see this explosion of life. And, and they called it trophic cascade because you add a predator at the higher level of the food chain and it just causes a reaction and changes the whole uh, landscape. Um, and so as I was looking at that I thought you know maybe this is a little too good to be true and it probably is. I think they had a point to prove. I went to the National Park Service website and thought they must have something on this because it's so great and, and Yellowstone turned around and, and they did introduce wolves. All that was true. I think they just exaggerated a bit on the benefits. But, but nonetheless, it's a good illustration how, how God works in a Christian's life. I mean, God often allows bad things, dangerous things, things that we would call trials and, and, and heartaches and hardships to come into our life for a reason, to come into our life to change what is barren inside of us into something that has true life. And it says in James 1, 2-4, it says, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet various or when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. So you can see that that James is saying, hey, you know, count it all joy when you go through these tough times, when you go through these trials, because God is trying to produce something in your life. He's trying to make you perfect and complete so that you lack nothing, so that you have true life. And so in Romans 8, 28, probably a lot of people's favorite verses, a verse, and probably the most well-known outside of John 3, 16 says, And we know that God causes everything to work for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose for them. You know, if we love God and we're called according to his purpose, not our purpose, not how we think life should be, but God's will and God's purpose for our life. If we love Him and follow Him and obey Him and pray to Him and have a relationship with Him, God says, I'll take it all. I'll take the mess, even if you created it. I can turn that around and redeem it for good in your life. It says in John 7, Jesus was talking, and He says, he, he shouted the crowds, Anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declare rivers of living water will flow from his heart. And so here's the bottom line. 
You know, God may allow wolves to come into our lives for a season because he's got a purpose for them. He's got a reason for them coming. And so while wolves may not have actually changed rivers as much as that video said, God can change us. He can change the, the desolate landscape in our hearts from barrenness so that it flows with rivers of living water that produce fruit in abundance and makes us become more like Jesus and prepares us for heaven and what he has in store for us for eternity. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time on The Bottom Line.